So today I want to show you how I edit headshot videos that I use frequently in my music videos. Typically you see four Julies, just headshots on screen singing all four parts of my videos. So I'm going to show you how I edit the individual headshot video to get it to have the right coloring, to the right background, things like that. So where you see me right now, I'm filming this on my iPhone, which I'm using in portrait position, which is the up and down version. Typically in videos, you would want to use the wide angle landscape position. But I found that when I record on my iPhone, if I'm not using portrait position, my eyes look shifty because the, the actual camera is up here on the top of the iPhone. And when I have the camera positioned on the top, I can look straight at the camera and look like I'm looking at you. But when I turn the camera sideways, that, that camera now is on the side of the phone. So if I'm looking, trying to look at myself, I'm, I'll look like I'm looking sideways like this. And that looks really weird. So sometimes when I record on my phone and I do it in portrait position, I have to then crop and edit and do some fancy things to make it look like I'm actually in a widescreen shot, when in reality I'm probably not. So I'm going to talk to you on my phone and at the same time I'm going to go on my computer and open up my Final Cut. Here's something else I want to show you. I want to show you the lighting that I have on myself right now. So I'm going to remove the phone. Okay. So here's my studio. Here's the wall that's behind me when I sit at the computer. It's actually a gray color, but I can make it look white with some creative editing. I have a lamp up here on the shelf that I, when I'm recording, I'll turn it on to shine on the wall because I try to brighten up the wall so I don't get too many shadows. And here's my cool new birthday present. A ring light. It's awesome. Ring lights are cool because you can actually mount a camera inside the light. Um, I've tried that. I've tried the camera in a few different positions. I can also just use my um, FaceTime camera on the computer and still have the ring light shining. Um, there's my tripod where I'm putting the camera, my iPhone camera, so that I can video myself while I'm doing this for you. Here's my computer. I've got a final cut. Okay, I put the phone back on my tripod and I'm reminded of a secret I want to tell you about the iPhone that I don't know how I found this out. I think I was researching this because it was driving me nuts. You know how sometimes when you record on your iPhone and you play it back and you find that the light is going bright and dark and bright and because it keeps trying to adjust like it thinks you're stupid and it needs to do it for you. It's some kind of auto adjust light thing. You can bypass that. You know how you can adjust the light on your screen right there by touching and playing with the light. If you press the screen and hold it for a few seconds, a little yellow sign will pop up that says, I'm taking my glasses off, AE lock. AE lock is gonna lock the lighting exactly where it is. And once you hit lock, you can still adjust it, but it's gonna lock it where you leave it. Make sure you do that if you're recording on your iPhone, then you won't get that constant light fluctuation. It's a good secret. I don't know. I found it somewhere. They don't tell you these things. You gotta find it on your own. Okay, you're there. I got my computer recording. So I'm gonna show you. I have imported a video of myself that I recorded on my iPhone. As you can see, this is in portrait position and I need to crop this and edit it to make it be like a widescreen. I'm going to get to that, but before I do that, I'm going to adjust my coloring right away. So let's go here and add the color. First I like to increase my exposure a little bit. That kind of whitens up the background, but then after I do that, I need to bring down my darkness a little bit. See, I could bring it way down, that's too much. But I'm gonna bring it down a little bit and add a little bit of saturation. Okay, now I'm gonna make a copy of this because I'm gonna use the copy for my background. 
So I'm going to do a control copy, put the playhead at the beginning, control paste. So now I have an exact duplicate. The one on the top is the one in the forefront. The one underneath it here is the one in the background. All right, I'm going to go to that one on top and I'm going to hit the key V. When you hit V, watch what that does. You didn't see what it did because I only V'd the first one and the second one is still there. Julie, you're funny. Well, look, let's V the second one. V. There, it disappears. So what V does is it toggles between active and inactive. So I'm going to deactivate the one on top and I'm going to activate the one that's behind it. See all this white space up here? I'm going to be sneaky. I'm going to use that white space and I'm going to crop it. And we're gonna use that as our background. So I'm gonna crop. Let's go to this crop feature here. Go like that. Make it a little smaller. Yeah. And a little bit more. That'll work. Even there's a little bit of my hair there, that's okay, because we're gonna cover it up. That's gonna get covered up with, uh, yeah, okay, maybe to be safe, let's just eke that a little bit more because Julie's bouncing around a lot. Let's just make it bigger. And a little bit bigger. There. Now my hair is really out of the picture. Okay. Now let's go back to the video that's on the top and activate it by hitting V. Ta-da! And let me tell you the reason why we colored everything before we copied it. Because if I would have made the copies first and then I went back and edited the color, it's going to be different. And then I'd have to edit the color of both of them. So do all the editing that you want to do and get everything exactly the way you want it on the first video. Then make your copy because then your second video will match it exactly. Now I just need to take the one that's in the forefront and we're going to crop that one. Do you know that when you use the crop feature, you know, sometimes you get stuck with the uh, snap to grid? If you hold, push and hold your command key, it will allow you to move it freely around and you won't snap to things. Because that snap feature is sometimes really annoying. All right, I kind of like that crop, so let's go with it. All right, now here's the last thing I do. You see how we've got the lines? You can see those lines there. I'm gonna go to my masking tools and pick the one called shape mask. Double click that and it will automatically go on my track. Now I'm just going to drag it to fit me. And here's something I like to do. These little green things here, I like to drag those right down to the bottom of the screen. And really I'm only using the top half of the masking tool. I'm not using this bottom half down here. I like to have that be where my masking tool is. Go a little bit above my head here. Make it not so squared. Get those as close to my arms as possible and then this outer line is my feathering. So you can see if you go out too far you still see the lines but then you bring it back in just where those lines disappear. That will give you a nice blend. And there you go. I'm going to scrub through and see Julie looks pretty much like she's on a white background there. Oh, I see the head. Do you see that head peeking out? We didn't do that very well. Here, let's deactivate the one on top by hitting my V key. Let's adjust the crop on that. I'm going to hold my command key so I can really refine that. All right, we shouldn't get any more bouncing of Julie's head. I right, put the first one back on. There we go. That's much better. All right, go back to full screen size. So that kind of takes care of how I can take my iPhone portrait video and turn it into a landscape widescreen video. Now let's say I had a video that was a little more yellow looking. I'm going to use my friend Mirko. Let's drag Mirko in here. All right. See this video is kind of yellow. I have a feature on Final Cut a plugin that I bought from Crumple Pop. It's the auto white balance. See what happens there when I mouse over it? That's the kind of look I can get. I'm going to double click and apply that auto white balance. I can do some further adjusting with the color tool. So let's add the color tool in there. Try and take, try, yeah, okay, that's not bad. Let's go with that. 
go to the exposure, it will brighten him up a little bit. That helps. Add some contrast. I don't think I'm going to add any saturation. So now let's do that trick that we did with my video. I think his is going to work a lot better than mine because as I scrub through, I see that he's not moving, bouncing around as much as I did. His head is a little thinner. We've got more white space to work with here. So I think even though it's not a lot of white space on top, we got some good white space on the sides we can work with. Let's do the control copy, control paste. We're going to deactivate the one in the forefront by hitting V. Let's look at the one in the background. Again, I'm going to reduce my screen size halfway so we can see all around. Instead of the crop tool, I'm going to go to transform here. Let's just drag it and make it bigger. Make it bigger. Drag it down. Maybe stretch him out a bit there. Drag it down some more. There we go. Now I know his head is still on the screen, but let's see if the other Mirko covers him up. Let's activate the top one. Yeah, we got we got enough stuff there that we're not going to see him. Now as I scrub through, do you see how the color is changing from light to dark, light to dark? That's why I like to use the same video as the background, because all the color adjustments are going to match. The background's going to match the foreground when the color goes from light to dark. Right, let's just go to the masking tool so we can cut out the border around his video. I'm going to add the shape mask like we did before. I'm going to stretch it. I like to put those little green dots down towards the bottom and just work with the top half of the mask. Put that as close as I can to his arms. Get the head to show, make it a little less square. And let's feather it. That's about where, how far we can go. Go back to fit screen so we can see what we got here. Oh, now as I scrub through it, you can see the color changes from light to dark and the background changes with the foreground so it all matches really nicely. Now again, if you use that feature on your iPhone where you lock the auto adjusting lighting, hopefully that will cut down on all the, the light and darks that go on. But a lot of cameras do this too. because They're trying to be all user friendly and do all these automatic things. Sometimes you don't want them to do that. If you have a camera that you can adjust your lighting and lock it into position, you should do that. So there you go. I think hopefully that will help you to record yourself and make a nice widescreen background using whatever background you have. It doesn't have to be white or light or gray. If you have a dark background, this will work too. You just make a copy of your original video and use that as your background by doing some stretching and cropping and adjusting. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.